Right, a few people have been saying, why don't I talk about and do a review of my car? Because I've had it that long. Anyway, I've had it two months now. It's done 3,000 miles. So this is a Range Rover Sport 2022 review and what I think of it and the time I've had it. It's a 440 BHP equivalent electric hybrid. First, I'll show you around inside what I like and what I don't like. First thing is massive improvement on the EV range, 51 miles, double what the other one used to do. They did quote 70, but in sort of motorway driving and sort of rural routes, 51 is what you get. Love the sat nav screen because you can have it in the Google Earth view. So you can see who's got swimming pools in the back gardens and tree houses and other things like that. And we'll go over here where we can see. I know there's some swimming pools in Hale, so. If you look there, there we go. They've got a swimming pool there. So you can see that as you drive past their house, which is amazing. Um, cubby holes, got one here, got another one underneath. Unfortunately, the charge cable for USB is under it, so you can't really shut them properly because the cable has to come out unless you plug into that one under there, which is no use nor ornament to anyone because you can't even see it when you're driving. Another thing, actually, I'm not too keen on is the lock button has been placed down the side of the door down here. So when you get in at night, you have to let someone in. It's a bit of a fumble to find it, but apparently that is because uh, it stops from being nicked. Yeah, it's led to believe that them buttons have been moved down there to stop it being stolen as easily. Um, heat seats are obviously on here, which is um, which is just like the other one, really push and pull. A lot less buttons. Uh, it's wide. It's very, very wide. Apparently it's four inches wider than the previous model, which obviously you do notice when you get into a car park. I've got the black roof because it doesn't get grubby fingerprints on it. Um, seats are nice, move the seat controls into the door cards. Um, and also the mirror controls now are down here. They used to be up here. Not sure why that is. Probably makes it a little bit cheaper to make because only one set of wires has to come to here perhaps. I don't know. Or maybe it was getting water in the top. Not really sure. Uh, steering wheel, a lot better uh, that's now to scroll up and down the volume on the other one it was buttons so this is once you get used to it it's okay though it is a nice big screen but i just feel it's a little bit faffy and sometimes it doesn't quite respond you get like this click when you do stuff but um sometimes it's not it doesn't want to work this is really clever though when i go to the cameras i can find the cameras um no idea how you found the uh, cameras. There we go. You've got this kind of view all around you, which is spooky. I don't know how it does it, but it can see. And you can sort of like... See, isn't that pretty clever? No idea how it does that, but it does. That's pretty neat. It's good when you're backing in spaces. You can see curbs. You don't curb the wheels. Door handles go in and out, but they collect muck. I don't know if you can see. So when they're inside, they get like muddy water in there, so you get dirty hands. Um, bottoms of the doors and here seem to collect muck as well. Not sure why. Let's have a look at this though. Don't like this. Doesn't seem to fit properly. Very, very flimsy. That's obviously where the petrol flap is, which you release from inside the cab. The back has a lot more room, I think, as well than the previous one. And the seats are a little bit more molded. And then you've even got this thing here which is a cup holder which is quite nice and a little cubby holder that's pretty clever we like that i think it's a ski hatch as well is it it's a ski hatch no yeah no no i don't think it is never mind the boot button is kind of hidden you don't know where to press you just have to sort of fumble around for it and get mucky fingers again unless you press the remote on the fob in the boot now, my other one used to have a boot liner, which was good because you didn't get all this muck. It was on a rubber boot liner. Problem is, this has this, which is dead handy because you can put stuff in it and drop it in these elastic things and move them backwards and forwards. But in order to use that, you can't use that if you've got a boot liner in. So hence why the stuff is just rolling around a bit. Seats now fall from here and also you can put the suspension up and down, which is good when you've got a tow bar, but they've done that for a few years. And there's a power point as well in the boot to charge things. Um, now, there is no ski hatch, although the middle seat does fall down independent. So I suppose you could say it's got a ski hatch. This is a little bit, catch your finger on that aluminium number plate. Now, I know they don't all have that, but 
I have caught my fingers on it when I've been putting stuff in and out of the boot because there's no sort of trim over the top of it. But the idea is then, you see, it keeps everything dead, dead streamlined. Another thing, this side, electric charge point. Now, when I got the last one, the charge point was on the front. Ideal, you pulled up, plug in the charger. Now, I have to pull past my charger and plug in the back. And then, if you imagine you're plugging in here on the last one, get your home headlights, whatever you call it. The, the, the lights stay on for a few minutes after you get out of it. That's really good. You see what you're doing when you're plugging the charger in. Now, it's, it's back down here. And I'm gonna to have to put an outside light now where my charger is, because when you open this, Again, it's a little bit flimsy and you're fumbling around it's completely pitch black you can't see where you're plugging it into it's a little tiny light that glows up there to undo it but it needs a light in here so if you're watching land rover stick a light in there so people can see what they're doing in the dark something like this these pub lights would be good underneath that charge point because you don't use them that often but you use that every time you come home yeah it's obviously dirty They've got rid of all, they've made all the gaps smaller, which is good. That's why it's made it more streamlined. And you obviously then get the water pooling in these bits here. You see where the mud comes to, probably because it's more sleeker. I mean, it, it is a hell of a nice looking car. Don't get me wrong. And I do like it, but there's just a few things on it that I do find a little bit annoying. So yeah, otherwise, pretty pleased. Went on a journey in it the other day. 50 miles, so 25 there, 25 back. Completely on electric all the way. I know electric prices have gone up, but it's great to not have to go to the garage and put petrol in it with exorbitant prices when you're getting ripped off even more than electric. One thing I'm not really that keen on is they've made the mirrors a lot smaller, but I think that's to keep it in the width. And they've put this like little window here as well, which is a bit, a bit unusual. Um, they've done away with them rubber things as well along the top, which used to gather sort of like green moss. So that's a step forward to preserve. I presume. This one's got a heated steering wheel. Absolutely great. It's not actually the car I ordered. The car I ordered has been delayed and delayed, but they give me this one as a pre-build model. Have I had any problems with it? Yes, one morning the suspension wouldn't rise and it was stuck in low mode and I couldn't uh, get it to go up. So I had to drive 40 miles with it stuck on the floor. Rung Land Rover Assist when I got to where I was going. Said, I don't need my car for a few days, come whenever. They were gonna come straight out us. And anyway, then they rung me back a bit later and said, look, we'll come Monday morning, because this was Sunday afternoon. They came out and it wasn't doing it when they arrived. And they said, bring it in the garage. I said, there's no point until it does it again, because it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And it's never done it since, but it had been parked on the slope. So whether that confused it a bit, don't know. Never confused the old model though. But yeah, all in all, do like it. Do like the fact that it's got a lot more range on the electric. It'd be great to have a fully electric one, but then you get range anxiety and end up drinking expensive Starbucks while you wait for your car to charge. So I think at the moment, um, I think I'd just stick with hybrid until hydrogen is a fuel of the future.